In this video, we're going to do the alternative method of calculating the correlation coefficient. Now, when we talk about correlation coefficient, small r, sometimes capital R, we're talking about the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, which means it's a sample version of the correlation coefficient. There is a population correlation coefficient, and that has a variable of rho. But in this video, we're going to calculate correlation coefficient, small r. So I have another video that uses this formula and shows you step by step how to use the formula to calculate the correlation coefficient. But recently, I've been asked if there is another formula and that uses n minus 1 and the standard deviation. Well, looking at some old books, I found this other method of calculating the correlation coefficient. Sometimes they call it a shortcut, but I'm not too sure if that's really the case. So let's use the second formula for the correlation coefficient with the same data that I used in the previous video using the fertilizer data and the bushels of beans. Uh, same numbers, same variables. But this time I need to know the mean of x and y and the standard deviation of x and y as well. Now, why would we do a problem like this in statistics um, using a different formula? Well, it's possible that they give you this data. They tell you, hey, calculate you know, the mean, calculate the standard deviation. And then they would say, based on what you got, use this formula uh, to calculate the correlation coefficient. OK, so. Let's write out x's, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, and 3. And the first thing we want to do is we want to calculate x take away x bar divided by the standard deviation of x. Well, that's not going to be a problem. We have all the numbers. So 2, which is x, take away 2.857, which is x bar, divided by 1.345. So do 2 take away 2.857, find that number, and then divide by 1.345, if you don't know how to do that calculation. You should get something like negative 0.637. Okay, let's do the next one, which is the next data point. 1 take away 2.857, divided by 1.345. 1 comes from our data set and 2.857 comes from the mean. We've got to do that calculation first. 1 take away 2.857 and then we divide by 1.345 to give us an answer of negative 1.381. Let's do the next data point same way and we get an answer of 0.106. And the next data point, 2, same thing. 2 take away 2.857 divided by 1.345, which is equal to negative 1.637. Now, if I'm going a little too fast, just go ahead and pause the video, and then you can catch up. Um, let's do the next one. Next one is 4 take away 2.857 divided by 1.345. The 4 comes from the data set. 2.857 comes from the mean, the x mean, divided by 1.345. That's the standard deviation for x. Again, the mean, the standard deviation, sometimes you have to calculate that, or um, you'll be given that information. OK, let's do the data point 5. So 5 take away 2.857 and then divide that by 1.345 gives you 1.59 and then 
the last data set, which we already calculated before, but we need to do it again, is going to give me an answer of 0 0.106. Okay. Now, if we look closely to our formula, we have done this piece of the puzzle. Now, we need to do this piece. How do we do that? It's going to be easy. We write down all the y values, okay? And then we need to do this particular math. We need to take y, each y, subtract that from the mean, and then divide by the standard deviation. Okay, so let's do that. So 4 is the y value. Take away 4.286, which is the mean. Do that math first, and then divide by 1.11, and that should give you negative 0.258. Okay, let's try the data third date, the data point three. So that's going to be three take away 4.286. Now again, where does the 4.286 come from? That's the mean. Okay, we do three take away 4.286, then divide by 1.11. 1.11 is the standard deviation for y. We do that math, we get negative 1.16. Okay, next one is going to be the y, data point 4. So 4 take away 4.286, do that math, divide by 1.1, 1.11, and it's going to give you negative 0.258. Then we can continue with the next data point, 3 take away 4.286, which we do that math and then divide by 1.11, will give you uh, negative 1.16. And then the next data point, we do the same math, and then we get 1.54. And then the next data point, which is 5, 5 take away, uh, 5 take away 4.286. Do that math, divide by 1.11, gives you uh, 0.643. And we do the same thing for the last data point. Okay, good. So now we did, if we look at the formula, we did this piece. Now we're do, we did that piece. But what's next? It seems like we need to multiply these two out and then add them up. That's what this, the sum is for. So... The first thing we need to do is multiply these two out and then we can after we multiply we can add them together so let's do that take each of these math pieces and multiply them together so let's do the first one we take uh, negative 0.637 times negative 0.258 we multiply that. Two negatives make a positive. We multiply the numbers. We get 0.164. One thing that's very important, I think, in this process is to keep as many numbers as you can. In this particular calculation, I think the minimum is that you should keep somewhere like three numbers after the decimal place. Okay. Um, if you can. If you can't, that's fine. Um, not everything in, in my calculations you'll see uh, three numbers after the decimal place because sometimes it gets a little cumbersome. But, um, but you'll notice that um, many of these values that I'm calculating, I try to keep three or more values after the decimal place. Okay, so let's continue on. Next one is going to be negative 1.381 times uh, negative 1.16. Two negatives again make a positive. Multiply the numbers out, 1.60. Next uh, set is going to be 0.106 times negative 
multiply that. Positive times a negative gives you a negative. Do the math, 0 0.027. Next set is going to be negative 0.637 times negative 1.16. Two negatives make a positive, and that gives you 0.739. One other thing to keep in mind is that you got to make sure you have the right order of all the products. Okay, what do I mean? I mean is that you can't take this number and multiply it with this number and expect the right answer. Okay, they have to be with the same pair, right? The same uh, ordered pair. So make sure you're using the correct pairs. All right, the next one is going to be 0 0.850 times 1.54 gives you two positives. When you multiply two positives, what do you give you? Another positive, 1.31. Then the next value, 1.59 times 0.643 gives you 1.02 when you multiply those two numbers out, of course. And then the last one gives you 0 0.068. Okay, so we just multiplied these two values. What's the next thing we need to do? It says here we need to sum the products. Okay, right? The sigma here, right, says to sum, sum the products. So when we add all these, don't forget some of these have negatives to them. When we add it all up, we get 4.874. Okay, we are almost done here. So let's write this out. So the formula says, take R equals one over N minus one, N meaning seven. We have seven pairs. And then we multiply that by the sum that we just found. And when we calculate that, 4.876 divided by 6, right, we get 0.812, which is fabulously close to the answer of the previous video, which was 0.811. So this is an alternative way of calculating the correlation coefficient.